I see some absolute insanity going on with this build. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, and we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. I am so excited about the builds we've got this month. We have a $500 gaming PC. Finally, we're able to build budget gaming PCs again, but this one needs tons of help. And we've got a 4K build coming up where they don't understand how 4K works. It's going to be crazy and a mess. If you get value, you out of the video, give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you are missing out on the coolest place for PC builders to get the best deals on the latest tech. Our video editing PC died recently, so I ran over to my local micro center where the friendly staff helped me find everything I needed. A top of the line X570 motherboard, Ryzen 5950X, awesome Lee and Lee case, and more for a great price. Whether you're building a new PC, buying a pre-built laptop or TV, or just want to hang out in the coolest tech place on earth, check out your local micro center and new customers. Use the code in the video description to get an amazing $25 off all AMD and Intel CPUs. Then add in a $20 motherboard combo discount for $45 in savings. All right, we've got Blue Stacks. Blue says, I love watching your videos and I'm looking to build a new gaming PC, all right? They just want to play Roblox at low to medium settings. They've got a budget of $400, wow, or they can go up to 500. It needs to look nice and they don't need a lot of storage and memory. It also has to be really small as they don't have a lot of space. Oh my goodness, you want aesthetics, you want small form factor, and you want it for four or five. $100. This is going to be insane. Let's see what you got. Okay, well, right off the bat, you're already over your budget of $538. And I see some absolute insanity, absolute insanity going on with this build. Let's start off with the, the, the thing that I think is the biggest problem right here. You're going to spend $107 on this in-win case. And this is one of these really small form factors. It looks almost like a PS5 or like, you know, you're not even big enough to be a PS5, right? And I'm honestly thinking, this is going to be a huge constraint. I don't, you're not going to be able to get a graphics card in here. We're going to have to go with integrated graphics. And I actually think that's really going to hold us back, despite the fact that you just want to play Roblox, you say, at low to medium settings. And yes, I see how you're doing that. You're going with the Ryzen 5 4600G, $150. That's an absolute ripoff, by the way, for this CPU. I'm not, not, nothing to do with you. This AMD needs to sell these CPUs a lot lower. Honestly, 4600G, this should be a $100 CPU. And then I don't know why we're going, I guess this is the aesthetics part of it. We're gonna go with the Cooler Master A71C. You often see this cooler in pre-built gaming PCs, really not any better than the Wraith Stealth that, it, uh, that the CPU comes with already. The only difference is it's got RGB to it. And we're spending $30 for RGB cooling on an already super tight budget. That's a little nuts. And of course, we're spending all the money, it's $100. $70 on an ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX board, but you're going to have a really bad day if you get a board with an older BIOS. This is actually a very good ITX board. Don't mean to smash this particular board, but it does not have BIOS flashback. The 4600G, now listen, because the 4600G has been out in the OEM market for a while, it's possible that you're going to get a board that already has a BIOS for it and you'll be fine. But if you don't, you're going to have a really bad day because you're going to need a 3 3000 series CPU in order to flash the BIOS. Memory's fine, two by eight gigabytes, DDR4, 3200 CL16, $65 for an RGB kit. I, when we're dealing with budgets this small, even like 10 or 15 bucks can make a big difference. So I'm, I'm a little iffy on that. And then we're just gonna go with 120 gigabyte 120 gigabyte SSD, and not even a very good SSD, by the way. Uh, this is just kind of bulk storage. It's a SATA drive. To me, really big mistake here. At least go with an M.2 of the, if you're only going to go with this. 256 would be my absolute minimum, but I would love to see us get 500 gigabytes of storage. That's what makes a real PC. Yeah, overall, for $540, I think we're in big trouble here. I think we're going to be very disappointed once we put this thing together. And we realized that that 4600G is only going to give us a graphics equivalent of a GT 1030, which is an ancient, terrible graphics card. And I think you're going to feel like you really burned your money and you got something that looks cool, but doesn't actually perform. All right, I call this $500 actually plays games PC. Why? Because it actually plays games for $500. This is a real gaming PC. It's not a fake gaming PC. Let's jump into it. 
But let's start off at that form factor. I know you wanted the super small form factor. ITX is absolutely gonna kill us at this budget level. However, we can build a micro ATX case build at this budget level, so we're gonna go with the Deep Cool Matrix 40. It's a really nice, very small uh, micro ATX case. It's not as tall as an ATX size case. Look, you will have to have a little bit of room on your desk for it, but you're gonna be so happy you went this route instead of that $107 absolute <laughs> terrible ITX case that's never going to give you the performance that you're looking for. And let's talk about what's really making this thing go. It's that we've got an RX 580. This is a used RX 580 on eBay right now. You can find them for $150. Why? Because mining is crashing right now. Ethereum is absolutely in the crater. It is dying even before it goes to proof of stake far sooner than any of us thought, even though those like me that have been predicting this for a while, I expect these cards will continue to go down. I expect them to be under $100 for an eight gigabyte RX 580 used mining card, not too long. You'll be able to build a lot of really awesome gaming PCs for low budgets. So go ahead and pick one of these up and Put a smile on your face. We're gonna pair that with the i3 10100F, $78. You can often find the i3 uh, 10105F as well. It happens to be out of stock. That's otherwise I would grab that one. It runs slightly faster, but for $78, $79, this is where you wanna be at this price point. Okay, we went with a Gigabyte B560M DS3H. So then this actually has Wi-Fi too for $60, $60. The B560 motherboards are just seem like they're being on fire sale all of a sudden. So check your local retailers. Uh, this is at Newegg and B&H right now for 60 bucks. Of course, check if you got a micro center near you. That's another really good place to go. They often have these things on discount for 60 bucks. This is a motherboard that's actually going to allow us to clock up the memory to 3200 speed, which is going to give us a lot more performance. And it's got Wi-Fi. It's got everything you really need for 60 bucks. That's insane. For the memory, we just went ahead and got the same kit that you got, except we nixed the RGB because we got to save a little bit of cash here. So I went with this kit for $50, a T-Force Vulcan. Again, DDR4, 3200, CL16. That's the sweet spot. You were absolutely right. That's what you want to get. We actually also picked up an actual 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD for only 40 bucks. Only about double what you were going to pay for 128 gigabytes of that terrible, you know, as SATA SSD. So this is actually going to give you room to put other games on besides Roblox or do some screen capture, do all kinds of video capture with this. Have a lot of fun with this and don't feel like you're starving for space. For the power supply, honestly, just the cheapest C tier rated unit on the PSU cultist list we could find. Right now, that is the Corsair CV650. Didn't have to be 650 watts, but 550-ish watts would be just fine for this build. However, this is the cheapest unit right now. A couple other ones you could look at, but at this budget, you're just looking for C tier or better. And to me, we still got you some aesthetics. So I still had a little bit of money left over. So I went ahead and put in for $27. I went and put in this up here, RGB fan pack. Now, I really like these because they also come with the controller down here. You can plug everything into them. You can also add stuff in the future. If in the future you want to get an RGB cooler instead, great. But this is really going to kind of bling up your overall build for only $30. So for a total of $510, yes, if that's too much for you, then nix the RGB fans and just go with a you know boring old PWM 120 millimeter black fan and it'll put you under your budget. But for $510, this is going to give you a gaming PC that's going to give you really, really phenomenal performance. I think you're going to be super happy with it. It's going to absolutely blow that 4600G out of the water you're gonna wonder what you were even thinking with that thing when you start playing on this. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we got Detroyer 85. Detroyer is a first time PC builder and they love this series. They need our help. All right, well, let's give you some help. They primarily plan on using this build for gaming. They wanna play at 1080p and they're willing to buy some parts used such as the case or monitor, but they want decent RGB and a white aesthetic. They got a budget of $1,400 for $1,400. I think we should be able to go 1440p given our GPU prices and the rest of the market is. Let's see what you got. Okay, ah, uh, ee, ah. All right, I don't wanna be too critical. You're a first time PC builder, I can see that you fell for some easy first timer mistakes. I think you did okay-ish. Let's go over what some of those mistakes are. And let's just take a step back. I see you've got a monitor in here, $139, 22-inch monitor. I'm not a fan of 22-inch monitors. Do yourself a favor, spend in $30 and get the AOC 24G2 over this Biotech monitor. That's an actual 24-inch monitor. Your eyes are going to thank you and it's a great panel. But that's not even the biggest thing I'm worried about. Even if we subtract a couple hundred bucks here for the monitor, we didn't spend enough 
stuff on our graphics card. We only ended up with the RTX 36. Now, look, I know you said, oh, I just want to play 1080p, but I think we could do better uh, than the RTX 3060. In my estimation, still a little overpriced, although I like that it's come down to 399 for the for the cheaper variants. That's that's very good. It's in a much better place than it was a month or so ago when I was like lambasting people for even thinking about buying it. It's okay to think about buying it now, but I just feel like we could definitely get more performance here. The CPU i5 11600K, just absolutely no reason to continue to buy this CPU at $200, outperformed by the i5 12400 or the Ryzen 5600, both of which are cheaper CPUs on cheaper platforms because we won't have to buy a Z series motherboard for it. Unless the CPU became significantly cheaper, I would avoid 10th and 11th gen. And this is one of the, I think, feel like the mistakes we made. Why are we getting an unlocked CPU, but we're running a B560 motherboard and a relatively expensive B560 motherboard at that. And I know why, because this is the all white one. Probably the Z690 was very expensive, you know, in the $200 plus range. Yes, so you want this for that all white aesthetic. However, I just think that we're buying an expensive motherboard, a good but expensive motherboard, a CPU, an unlocked CPU. We're pairing it with a wrong motherboard, really. The B560 would probably be fine, but then why not just get the uh, the locked part, the i5-11400 instead? Doesn't really, this is where things are just kind of starting to fall apart just a little bit. I don't have any problem with the uh, the white team group memory. This is memory I often recommend, 3200 CL16, you did a good job there. And if you want RGB, this is a pretty cheap kit. The storage, I just, I want people to stop doing this. This is something that we used to do back in the day, the tiny SSD and then the big hard drive, right? This is what we used to do when SSDs were stupid expensive when they were first introduced like 10 years ago. But people are still doing this. You want way more storage than 256. I don't want to see an SSD under 500 gigs. And 500 gigs to me is still small, but at least it's an acceptable size where you could load a couple of games on it with your operating system and some other files. For $26, you could have for like 50 $15 more gotten a 500 gigabyte drive instead. And then I, I look, I know this case is fine. 1400 bucks is about the range, the budget range. I would start thinking about this case. I still think it's maybe a little more expensive. You're also missing a fan in the rear here that, we, that you're going to have to, and especially if you're going to do an IQ fan, it's going to be like a $30 fan. So just this case just brings a lot of expense to it. I really think I'd more rather be in the $1,800 range before I start thinking about a super expensive case like this. Power supply seems Seems fine, 650 watt. This is a good unit. Uh, it's a EVGA Supernova, got no qualms with it. Not not a bad price, did pretty good there. And of course, because we need more cooling for that unlocked CPU, we went with a, a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, the one that I often recommend. It's got a great price on it, but again, just wondering why we having to go with this, especially when it's clearly costing us some GPU performance. Again, love this cooler, just questioning whether or not we need it. So for $1,360, I just feel like we're leaving a lot of performance on the table. There's nothing wrong with this system. If you put it together, it would work Work just fine. It would look nice. I just think that we can do way better for you. All right. I called this the awesome white 1440p gaming beast with a monitor. Why? Because it's a beast and it's going to play at 1440p. We're leaving 1080p behind. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Let's start off with that monitor. Listen, the HP X27Q, this is the best price to performance budget 1440p gaming monitor out there. Got great performance, very similar to the Gigabyte M27Q. The M27Q, not, the price is just not really competitive right now. So I would recommend this monitor instead. You can get it just about anywhere and great performance. Now listen, I hemmed and hawed about whether to go, stay with Intel because you had Intel or go with Ryzen. The reason I ended up going with Ryzen is just the platform costs are different. Uh, I know you like this Asus ROG Strix B5 uh, uh, motherboard. So unfortunately the B6 60 version of it, still quite expensive, well over $200. The B550 uh, is only $167, so that pretty much made my mind up right there. So we went with the Asus ROG Strix B550A. This is the same style of motherboard you were looking at. This, this one has great features on it. It's got really crisp, amazing audio on it, ALC1220 audio codec. It's got great rear I.O. Just overall, very, very good motherboard for only $168. And I paired that with a Ryzen 5 5600. Listen, if you wanna spend 15 bucks more and get the 5600X, it will give you a tiny little bit more performance. So feel free to do that. A 1440p, you're probably not gonna see any performance difference. That would be primarily at 1080p. And for cooling, we just went with a simple tower cooler that's all white and it's got RGB aesthetic to it. I think you're really gonna like this. In the future, you could of course replace it with an all-in-one liquid cooler if you feel like uh, you want to, but I just felt like we can squeeze 
using a graphics card that's much better, which we're gonna get to in just a moment. For $20, this is a brand new cooler. I've got a couple in that I've been using. They're, I really do like them. They're not quite as robust as some of the other four heat pipe cools, but the 5600 does not need that huge amount of cooling. So I think you're gonna really enjoy this. But the piece de resistance is the MSI Radeon RX 6700 XT. This GPU is gonna smoke that 3060. It's gonna smoke that 3060. And honestly, for $475, just, Nvidia has nothing to compete with this right now at this price range, unless you're willing to go up to like an RTX 3060 Ti, which is almost, you know, uh, $550, $600, or the RTX 3070 for about the same price. 3060 Ti's, by the way, are seem like they're going away. They have they were always a down bin of the 3070. They're not having to down bin many of the 3070s because the node is very mature. So 3070 is gonna be kind of where it's at right now at $600, just not competitive in my mind with a 6700 XT in terms of you know, 475, that's about what you wanna spend at your budget level. Memory, we just went ahead and stuck it out with your kit, really like this particular team group kit. And then for the storage, we went with the Silicon Power A60 one terabyte drive for $70, $69 right now. This is what you're really looking for. We're gonna ditch that uh, four terabyte drive. Why don't you try doing this first? Forget that, that 256 gigabyte SSD that you had. Try this first. And then remember, if this isn't enough storage for you, you can always get an, another one of these, or right now you can even go up to two terabytes, but you could always add like a, something like a two or four terabyte hard drive in the future if you want. I just think give this a shot first. You're gonna, you're, I really think you're gonna see the benefits. For the case, I went with something cheaper. I went with the Big Phoenix Nova Mesh. This comes with four ARGB fans included. It's got a PSU shroud. Really nice case overall. Uh, and and the, the thing that I really like about it is it fits much better within our budget at $90. And then we just went and stayed with your power supply. So overall for $1,400, for only $40 more than you were looking to spend, we're gonna give you 1440p gaming performance, a 1440p gaming monitor that's actually good. And it's, it's 27 inches instead of 22 inches. Oh my gosh, your eyes are gonna love you for that. And it's gonna have a great all white aesthetic that you could even upgrade in the future with something like an all-in-one liquid cooler if that's the route you wanted to go. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Okay, we've got NoScope Max. They're in the UK. They're second guessing their ability to build a PC. They're confused right now. They wanna get an RTX 3080. Their budget is 1,500 pounds. That's about 1,800 US dollars. And they're just confused about how 4K gaming even works. They currently have a full HD. That's a 1080p monitor, goes to 240 Hertz. You can't, that's as far as it's gonna go then in terms of resolution. Remember the resolution and the refresh rate are different. If you're confused on that, watch my best monitors for gaming. 2022, I go through the whole thing on how that works. You're gonna need to get a 4K gaming monitor in order to play at 4K. I'm gonna trust you're gonna be able to do that. Check out our video for more, but let's see what you've got. Okay, I'm gonna just tell you, you came very close, but you're already, you're 1,600 pounds. You're already 100 pounds over budget. That's almost 120, 130 US dollars over budget. And I just feel like we didn't make it there. There are things that are missing from your build. Now, yes, you've got very, very close. So let's clean this build up. I don't mind going with the i5-12400F here. I'd love to see an i5-12600K. I just don't think we've got it in the budget for this uh, or a Ryzen 5700X. I think we may be closer to a 5700X than an i5-12400. However, 12400F is fine with an RTX 3080, which is what we're pairing this with. However, we decided to get a very expensive one and this is a 10 gigabyte version. And look, I know EVGA, it looks flashy. It's got the cool RGB on it. But at the end of the day, I think we wanna make sure that we're getting the performance that we need because I see that our build is missing a couple of key elements. First of all, you don't have enough fans in this Corsair 4000D airflow case, so it only comes with two included fans on it. You're gonna need more airflow than that. I like the case, 80 pounds, 81 pounds, not a bad, it's about 100 US dollars or so, not a bad price to pay for it. But I'll tell you, I think we're overspending on this Cooler Master Hyper 212. 46 pounds, that's about 60 US dollars. I just think we can do better here for just a budget tower air cooler. Yes, it's got the RGB fan on it, but we can get, find something else with RGB. And then the motherboard, I just feel like we've really kind of, we're getting a cut rate motherboard. Now listen, at the budget level, this is this is one of the few budget B660s that will actually run the i5-12400 at the full frequency. Some of the other budget ones are trash essentially for it. They will not run it at the full frequency. You'll lose FPS. So that's fine in terms of this board, but you're gonna get cut rate audio. You're gonna get cut rate connectivity. This is just a cut rate board. Honestly, to me, this is a hundred, 
$110 motherboard, not, I mean, right now the price is 134 pounds, which, you know, what is that, like 160 US dollars? That's insane. And that's really been the failing to me of uh, 12th gen Alder Lake is the motherboards. I really wish they would just get that in line a little bit. I don't know what it's gonna take. Memory's fine. This is might be a little bit more of an expensive kit, 57 pounds for 3200 CL16. The memory's fine, but again, I just don't, I see these expensive Samsung 970 Evo Plus one terabyte drives, and I just wonder why. Why Why did we go this route as opposed to getting better audio on a motherboard that's a gaming feature? Why are we interested in storage features? I think sometimes people just get confused and they get scared that the, the drive's not gonna work, so they just invest a little bit too much money. Now, that being said, the price on this has come down, but 102, remember, that's 102 pounds. So it's like 123, 125 US dollars for this drive, just too expensive. For the power supply, 850 watts sounds about reasonable for this. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if we can find a cheaper unit. The RM850X uh, is good. It's a good unit. And if, if this is a good price, then we'll definitely keep it. But overall, for 1,600 pounds, already 100 pounds over your budget, I just feel like, I feel like we've invested money in the wrong places, especially if this is primarily gaming and some content creation. So let's see what we can do about that. I call this, this rocks 4K gaming PC because this is gonna rock 4K gaming. Let's jump into it. Let's go for the first thing that I, I changed, which is I went ahead and I just went and grabbed the cheapest RTX 3080 12 gigabyte card. Remember the 12 gigabyte has more performance than the 10 gigabyte. It's not just about the VRAM. They've actually clocked this card up a little bit. It's it's a higher performance card. Not not more than 3080 Ti, but kind of in between the thir uh, the 10 gigabyte 3080 and the 3080 Ti. And I think this is really the sweet spot. So we're actually kind of, but for less money, we're gonna buy you a card probably with more performance, the Gigabyte Gaming OC one. That's simply the cheapest one available in the UK right now. We stuck it out with the i5-12400. I almost went Ryzen here to see if I could do better on the motherboard because I know we want some better features. But over there, it looks like the B660 motherboard prices aren't that terrible. For only 20 pounds more than you were gonna spend on that super cut rate motherboard, I got you the MSI Mag B660M mortar. Now this has ALC 1200 audio, improved audio on it, it's got improved rear I.O. Just, this is a much better board. Now this one comes in all black. There's also a black and silver one for the same price. You can decide which one you want. Remember, links for all these builds, by the way, are gonna be down in the video description. You don't have to just write all this down. Check out the links in the video description. For the cooler, we just went with the Deepcool AK400. This is a cooler that just came out recently. It ha comes with the LGA 1700 mounting brackets. In my mind, for 30 pounds, this thing is an absolute steal. For the memory, I stuck it out with your memory. You were right. This is a good, uh, relatively inexpensive kit, but, for the SSD, we came way down. We came down to 72 pounds instead of 102 pounds. We're just using the Western Digital Blue SN570, one terabyte. Now this is the uh, kind of an upgraded version of the SN550 that a lot of folks are familiar with. Uh, available right now at a really good price and this has slightly more performance. So overall, pretty good deal. Another place I cut cost and I, I think I improved aesthetic performance here. We went with the Aerocool Airhawk Duo ATX mid tower case. I did read some reviews. I, these are not available in the US so I've never actually built with one but it does appear to be a good quality case. Look, it's gonna be more on the budget side but it's got two 200 millimeter RGB fans and it comes with a rear exhaust. Phenomenal. That This is really gonna be great for the airflow, especially when you're pushing something like an RTX 3080. And we're getting it for 60 pounds, 60 pounds. I mean, cheaper than the one you were gonna get and it's got all the fans we need and it's got RGB and it looks amazing. For the power supply, I was able to find an, an A-tier rated uh, PSU from the PSU Cultus list. That's the MSI MPG 850 uh, watt unit. It's the A850GF. These are phenomenal units. We've used them in builds on the channel. I think we used the 650 last time, but again, just really good quality from MSI and it's fully modular, which I really like. So overall for 1,479 pounds, we're gonna get you a PC capable of playing games at 4K that's gonna give you much better audio, that's gonna give you much better performance on the GPU itself, gonna give you much better cooling and I think it's gonna look even more awesome. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Thank you for joining us on this month's Boost My Build. What would you have done differently on some of these builds? What did you think about the $500 gaming PC build? I can't believe we've seen one of those in 2022. If you get value out of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel and subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you've missed any of the other Boost My Builds we've done recently, I'm gonna put the whole playlist right here. Check it out. We've got some crazy, crazy builds and we'll catch you on the next one.